Christopher Nkunku is injured for 16 weeks. When I tell you 16 weeks, I mean four months he's going to miss of the Premier League season. And people are trying to tell me we don't need attackers. Neymar is being offered to Chelsea for 60 million euros. Apparently Pochettino says no to Neymar. Can you believe that? Kudos is stalling on a move to Brighton because he knows Arsenal and Chelsea are interested. And finally, the kit numbers are up released and a lot of you are going to be excited to find out a few big numbers have been given handed out and we've got a new number 10 let's get into it welcome to the gaf guys you've read okay today's video is an insightful one it's full of interesting dialogue when i tell you interesting dialogue i mean a lot of you are going to disagree with my stance a lot of you are going to agree with my stance but you're going to enjoy it and the reason i say that is because it's a little bit controversial today. we're going to break it down we're going to look at the inkunku injury and how it's going to impact chelsea and the domino effects that have gone on we'll look at the numbers at the end so all I want from you guys is to hit that like button because you guys have been smashing it recently honestly I am so grateful I want a thousand again and then we move from there subscribe we are nearly 550 people away from hitting 30k that is a massive achievement like I say on every video that's nearly the allocation of Bournemouth Stadium mad but another thing from now on in the pinned comment is my Twitter go follow me on Twitter it's the best place to interact with me when I tell you lot I am always responding to people I'm always yapping at people I am always biting back so I need you lot to go and follow me there it's a great way for us to build a community and for us to have honest and open discussion let's move on uh, we got a little bit of news today that I almost was expecting because we spoke about it yesterday but I really annoyed me it really annoyed me it infuriated me and it hurt me and what really annoyed me about the Christopher and Kunku injury is the fan reaction fans are making excuses for the board's negligence and the reason I say the board's negligence before we get started Christopher and Kunku is our best player in the attacking front line he is the player that we need to count on to get our goal for me Sterling and Kunku and Jackson somehow needed to get combined 40 league goals this year for us to stand any chance of getting top four. All of a sudden, you take in Kunku out, the experience with uh, Sterling, and all of a sudden, they need to get 20 apiece. I don't trust Noni Madueke and Mikhailo Mudrik at their young ages to be contributing 13 goals a season. Not because I think they're rubbish, not because I don't think they're great, not because I don't think they're good, I just think they're inexperienced, I haven't seen it, so it's going to be difficult for me to believe in it. With the other two, I have seen them generate regular numbers on a regular basis in Holland and in, uh, in Germany and in England. Jackson got 9 in 12 last year. We can believe that being the sole number 9, he's going to get opportunities and he's going to get goals. So when I say him being injured for 16 weeks is a problem, I don't want people to start having saying it's not that deep trusting Carney. I like Carney, but Carney needs to be eased in slowly. He needs to be given minutes here and there, not too much pressure, being able to express himself, taking out the firing line when needed. And what really irritates me is me saying Nkunku is injury prone is not me saying I don't like Nkunku. I think the board have really screwed up on this. They opted to get Christopher Nkunku after we saw how many injuries he's had in recent years. People said he never had any injuries before he was 24. Okay, since he was turned 24 this is what's happened he had a wrist injury of half a week okay that happened he had a knee injury for 12 weeks three months out that is a big deal that's the catalyst for what's are coming later he came back too early played and then they realized he's got fitness issues a week and a half out then again torn a muscle fiber five and a half weeks out guys this was all in one season he missed nearly over 20 weeks of football, nearly that much. And then the new season starts, everyone thinks he's ready to go, and guess what? Christopher Nkunku, 16 weeks out. Guys, he's injury prone, we need to accept it. The quicker we accept it, the better we are going to realize that this player, at this moment in time, cannot be counted on. We need to have him as a luxury piece. He cannot be having a team built around him because at any moment, Christopher Nkunku can get injured. That's my personal opinion, do not abuse me for it. Chelsea need to go and acquire a new player for that number 10 role and a winger position, ASAP. Elise is not going to cut it because he is just as injury prone. I don't care what anyone says to me. Listen, what's gonna be the excuse next year? The pollution in West London is different to the pollution in South London? 
Don't give me this nonsense, okay? Do not go and sign Elise. He is injury prone. I don't want to see him at Chelsea Football Club. We've got too many of these players that they've signed on a discount that are injury prone that are going to come in, pick up more injuries, and then we're going to say, oh my God, we're short. Get players that can stay fit. Speaking of breaking news, Neymar linked with Chelsea. And I did not speak about this on, on purpose yet. The reason I didn't speak about it was because I knew two different sides of the story would come out. The French media jumped on it. RMS spoke about it openly and my good friend Fabrice Hawkins has come out with it again. He said Neymar's entourage has been discussing ongoing, having ongoing discussions with Chelsea's entourage. He is available for 60 to 70 million euros and the deal can be on if Chelsea want it. This morning we got the reverse and I knew this was going to happen so I held back. I didn't want to give you guys fabricated news, I wanted to give you the full picture. We had Jacob Steenberg come out, Nazir Kinsella come out and more individuals come out with Pochettino said no. Maurizio Pochettino does not want Neymar at the club. Chelsea no longer are interested and Chelsea are going to back off from the Neymar deal. And what I'm going to say now is going to upset a lot of you. Pochettino needs to get out of his own backside. This arrogance and high horse that he has, that if they don't work hard, they can't play for my team. Big man, quality over work ethic. I don't care what anyone says. What is the point of having a number 10 that presses when he can't contribute in the final third? Neymar is argu arguably third best player in the world. Neymar contributes and walks into 99% of the teams in the world. He starts for Manchester City, that's how good he is. So if we're refusing him because of work ethic, refusing Shirky because of work ethic, we're refusing Felix before because of work ethic, who the hell are we gonna have in number 10? Conor Gallagher, I'm sorry, that is unacceptable. Your number 10 needs to be a complete player. And I believe that this is Poch's call. I know Poch was at PSG, he most probably could not control Neymar and literally realized, hold on, I can't do this again. I understand he most probably wants to have a team in his own mold, but we need to have quality. He takes the experience box, he has won a trophy every year of his career since 2009, he gets goals and assists, and he automatically enhances the club on and off the pitch in every single way. We need to get to this level of quality of players. If we're not gonna get him, we're not gonna get Felix, go and get me Mohamed Kudos. Mohamed Kudos is available. Brighton have got, got a bid accepted, but he can't agree personal terms with them. Why? He's holding off. He's old enough from concluding that deal for one reason and one reason only. He knows Chelsea and Arsenal are sniffing around to get his services. They know he's available. He's literally waiting for Chelsea to jump in. This is the player Chelsea need to go and get. Mohamed Kudos is twice the player that Michael Olise is in the sense that he gets goal contributions, he gets uh, physically more imposing, he's more athletic, and more importantly, I think he's more intelligent as a player. I think he picks up the pockets, he's got a better weight of pass. All round, he is a better player than Michael Elise. Less of an injury record, in my opinion. People are gonna say he's got some injuries. Elise is always injured. Like literally, the reason Elise is not at a high level is due to his injury record. That's my personal opinion. Let me know your thoughts. Would you prefer Elise, Neymar or Kudos? Obviously, if your answer isn't Neymar, then something's wrong. But if you opt for Kudos, we might still agree. Final piece of news, and this is the final one. Chelsea's kit numbers have been announced today. On the same day as we have been literally teased about a sponsor, who cares, I don't really care, we're just gonna have something in front of our kit. The kit numbers got announced. A lot of the numbers are on the screen now so you guys can see and you can break it down and wonder about it. I'm not one that really cares about it, but I know you lot eat this crap up, so I'm gonna talk about it and give you the stuff that kinda stood out for me. Number one, Enzo got number eight. After Frank Lampard, we've been waiting for an eight to come across and just take that shirt and make it his own. Barkley struggled, Kovic struggled, Enzo hopefully will be that guy. Then we have the number four, vacant. I wonder why the number four is still vacant. <clears throat> Moises Caicedo. Sorry, did I say something? Okay. Number 10, we got Mikhaila Mudrik. I didn't think Mudrik was gonna get the number 10. I thought he was gonna get the seven, but the fact that he's got the 10 means this is a very good number for him. At this moment in time, he's most probably gonna be the face of our franchise going forward. I'm excited to see what happens with him. He needs to take this number and he needs to have one crazy heck of a season. The other ones that stood out for me were Santos at 20 and Ogochokwo at 16. Potentially they could stay, meaning no Tyler Adams, but Caicedo coming in, that would be amazing. I'm not gonna lie to you. Ogochokwo, Santos, uh, Gallagher, Enzo and uh, Caicedo works lovely for me. And a big final one, 
Levi Colwell gets number 26. Levi gets John Terry's number. Hopefully, after a little, a little sabbatical, the number took of going to the one and only Kaladu Koulibaly. It goes to a player now that's going to be at Chelsea for 10 to 15 years all the way till he's 36 years old and he literally will shine in that trophy and that number will bring him as much success as it brought John Terry. Guys, this was the Gaff Guys view. It's a little bit of a rant. It's a little bit of an upset one, but I'm sorry. What can I do, all right? It's been one of those videos. Guys, if you made it this far, hit the like button. If you made it this far, subscribe to the channel, share this video out on Twitter, clip it, put the best parts out. It really helps this channel. And finally, in the pinned comment, is the fantasy football and my my Twitter. Go follow me there, hit me up, let me know your thoughts. Peace out, I'm out.